a city where shadows hide more than secrets. Two detectives step out of the fog, not to solve crimes, but to crack business cases. We dig into the numbers, dissect the strategy, and shine a light on what needs fixing. Welcome to Business Noir, where every episode is a new case, and every case has a story. Welcome to this uh, new episode. Uh, this episode is going to be a little bit uh, different because we thought it will be very interesting to see. I'm saying all the time interesting, but it's true. I mean, yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> so everything that we do is interesting. Uh, yeah, because we thought it would be like very, very, very cool to talk about more about us mm -hmm. and what we do and how we met and all the things that we've been doing since uh, yeah since we arrived to Poland actually yeah i think that it's it's a interesting thing to do because you know people can understand a little bit better what is our background yeah as well like we can give a sneak peek of what is happening behind the cameras because it's very funny like uh, because it it's as well like very much related to what we do to see like somebody can see the final product of something but people not always see the the journey yeah. and see all the mistakes and all the things that we have done wrong to get to to a place it's it's always nice to do so yeah. this is going to be like special episode we're going to try to keep it a little bit shorter than our normal episode but we cannot promise anything <laughs> let's see what happens <laughs> yeah okay um okay so i would like to start I don't know, maybe just instead of introducing us as, oh, I'm, I'm Nico and Borja mm -hmm. doing this, blah, 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 is how we met. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be like, uh, uh, I mean, I can say it from my perspective and you can tell you from, my, sure. from your perspective because uh, I remember I was, my sister was visiting to me after two years without uh, seeing her and it was the, f yeah, it's the first, the second time that mm -hmm. she came to visit me. And uh, we were doing this uh, this project together about co-living spaces and all the stuff. And she she has this kind of character that she's moving all the time. She's doing a lot of stuff all the time, looking on the internet, blah blah. This and, all. Yeah. and she showed me this um, this event or something like that. And then I I started looking by myself mm -hmm. on different places, and I saw a post. Of a of a guy with a Spanish name, <laughs> with a, and I thought, but I don't know. He doesn't look like real a lot of Spanish, but but okay, let's see. And you were asking, and it was he, it was him, it was Borja, and he was asking for a um, videographer or something like that for a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, it's interesting because my background is in film production. So I thought, okay, it will be interesting. And then I saw that you were having an event, a business meeting. And okay, that would be super cool to meet you at that time, no? Instead of having a coffee. I remember I sent you a message on LinkedIn uh, saying in English because mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't sure that you were like uh, Spanish or I don't know, you know, you, you never know. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I went to the with, to this event. The, it was the first one, I think. No. Yeah, I think that it was the first one uh, with my sister. Mm -hmm. And then since then we, we we talked before on 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 LinkedIn. And then since then we we, we had a couple of meetings also with my sister, mm -hmm. and we we saw that we had a lot of things in common to about what we wanted to do yeah. and everything. So that's how how we met, and it was in July. Yeah, like it, it was like not that long ago, like some months ago, but at like times, you know, like it, a lot can happen in short time. Like yeah. it feels like like very packed everything. Yeah. And now we are doing a podcast. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm gonna tell you about my my perspective, how I I got there, because it's a it's interesting story. Basically, uh, this year when it started the year, it was a, a very bad moment for me, in terms of like personal and job life, everything was like very shaking in my life. Uh, I was totally burned out in my previous job and, and so on. So I decided to kind of quit my job. And again, as I told you, I was going through uh, personal 
stuff like bad, bad moment in my life. And normally what I do, it's I, I do the opposite of what the instinct tells you. When, when you are bad, like this feeling of doing nothing, I know that I need to do stuff to not fall into the pit. So I started doing a lot of things. So the first thing that I started doing was these YouTube videos. I have some, some YouTube videos. It's a channel, it's called Corporate Cut. And my idea was to share my knowledge of what I have learned in corporation as a leader. But obviously, it's, it was a, a lot of learning, right? Because I, I don't know how to do videos and so on. But OK, I don't want to. The point, going to the point. <laughs> uh, then I started the, the business meeting. And at the same time, I was looking for somebody to help me with the videos, right? So exactly, I, I started doing all that stuff. And then you sent me the message. I saw you. Actually, at the beginning, I thought that you were, I don't know why, I thought that you were from Argentina. I don't know. Actually, it's, tr it's kind of true because yeah. my parents are from yeah. Argentina. So yeah. I don't know. Like, maybe the, the, the surname, whatever, something. So uh, I remember I, I, I organized this uh, business event. We met. And then you told me your project that you were doing something similar of what I'm interested in. And we started speaking. Actually, at the beginning, it was nothing like very specific. Mm -hmm. And then, as you mentioned, and we were meeting with your sister. And I remember like the first idea was the, the workshop that we're going to do together. That was the first solid idea. But from this idea, a lot of new ideas came. And one of the solid idea was this podcast that we're doing already for some months. And it's, it's very entertaining and a very, uh, very good experience. So in general, <coughs> sorry, I must say that uh, it's funny because if you see it like retrospective, I will never thought that I would start a podcast with you. Yeah. And this is the thing of, of being open-minded. You know, you, you, you keep your, your mind open and then you leave your project grow into a direction. And then one thing that at the beginning, the idea of contacting us was like, you will help me with my YouTube channel. Finally, this didn't happen yeah. because the project evolved into another direction. And it's, it's cool because it always makes me reflect on the idea of do things. It's always better than not doing things because maybe things are not going to go the way you want, but they will flow into a different space that maybe you don't even know. So basically, yeah. Yeah. This is this is our story. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, it's totally true what you said because I didn't have any also a, a, an idea of, about what I wanted to do, and 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 thanks to to uh, look, the first step was my sister coming to visit me. The first step was this one, and then eventually graduated on this on this. Um, these things happening now mm -hmm. in, in, in my life. And, uh, and now I'm getting in this position and in this moment that I know much better what I wanted because exactly what you said, because I did something. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that things can change. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, the YouTube, the YouTube idea didn't work. We don't know if it's going to work in the future. Yeah. Let's see. But I never thought they would be doing a podcast at exactly. the beginning of the summer with you about business, about these things. And it's an evolution that it's, I'm really happy about it. I'm having yeah. a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, mm -hmm. but I think it's, it's fun. And it, it's, I think it will be like really interesting to, to tell about the, the story about, what the, about, the, about the podcast. What's the inspiration about the podcast? Yeah. Okay, I... I uh I remember, like, I think that this, I'm not sure if I remain, re, re, can recall it, like, properly. I remember we were having a coffee, speaking about the, the workshop, right? And then you told me, like, it would be nice to do this kind of podcast to showcase skills. And at the moment, I was doing another podcast with a friend about Spanish culture. It was, like, my first time that I was doing a podcast, just for fun. And I said, like, yeah, let's, let's do that. And then we start, like... Uh, brainstorming about the, the mood of the podcast and, and we decided like to go for this you know Sherlock Holmes idea with the cases because uh, we wanted to do a podcast that is okay it's business but with something different like it has a, a little twist or some kind of like 
special flavor. And we came up with this uh, idea, Sherlock Holmes investigation stuff. And I think that it, it was nice. Yeah, I think it was one of the uh, main ingredients is like, okay, well, let's do something, but it has to be original. It has to be mm -hmm. like something that um, that is not only one more, one podcast more. We need to give some soul to yeah. this, to this, to, to what we do because uh, beginnings are really difficult. Nobody's gonna watch you. Nobody's gonna listen to you. Only your friends and everything. Yeah. And the evolution to that, to that, you need to give them something mm -hmm. because there are thousands, millions of podcasts yeah, out there, yeah. and you need to be combining those things. Combining is the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Plus some vision about. How we're gonna? How I'm gonna present it mm -hmm. that it can be attractive to people. Yeah, and it's also really interesting because we were thinking about like I'm not a I'm let's say I'm not a huge fan of Sherlock Holmes, but I always liked the the idea of Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, because that was the idea. I think it was mm -hmm. like we were in your home, I think, uh, in your in your apartment, and you told me, oh, that would be super cool to have these uh, business cases and everything like Sherlock, and I thought. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. We have it. And I think it's also the brainstorming came naturally, like, you know, these kind of things. And here we are. We are, well, I don't know, we are fixing problems every podcast, every new yeah. podcast. Learning a lot. Learning it's a like lot. It's like the, the best thing of this. Like, there are two things that you mentioned that are interesting. Like, the first part, like you said, like, the beginnings are difficult because nobody listens to you. But as well, you know, if, if you... If you want, you can see that as an advantage because it's something that I learned from a YouTuber. I don't remember the name, but it's a very, very popular YouTuber that helps people to start in YouTube. And what made me start my first YouTube channel was exactly what he told me, like, like what he told me, not what I, <laughs> I saw in, in his video. <laughs> he didn't tell me personally. Uh, but it was like, <clears throat> at the beginning, nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to watch your videos. And this is fine because then, you know, if you fuck up, It's okay. Because There is not like a, a global it. repercussion. So yeah. you have a lot of margin to improve. And that was like, like he, he was saying like, yeah, probably your first 20 videos, nobody's going to watch them. And this is not bad. This is very good because then you don't have pressure. You can start and by doing, you will learn how to do that. So I think that this is uh, like always in life, you can see life, you know, whatever happens, You can see it with good eyes or bad eyes. So there is a part, like there's a way of saying, like if, if somebody's thinking about the new project, oh, it's so difficult. And at the beginning, nobody's gonna see my videos, my podcast, my, yeah, that's actually, that's cool because then you have a lot of margin to start and whatever mistake you do, then it will be something that you add. And then the other thing is that, like the, the journey, like what we said in the end, we don't know if this podcast It's gonna become something or not, or it's gonna finish. But the thing is, like our purpose with the podcast is to help people and to learn things. And this is, is this is achieved already. So I'm satisfied. Like from now on, whatever happens with the podcast, it will be an addition because, as as you mentioned, we have learned a lot doing that. Like we need to take different cases and this, you know, put your imagination into work, and it's it's very interesting, very funny. Yeah, and it's kind of like it's part of the learning curve yeah. of of doing something because, as you said, also even if you don't have, I mean, the beginnings, the beginning is like no one is going to see you and everything. Just yeah, but it's also it's difficult. Do th doing things is difficult. Yeah, it's difficult to go to work. It's difficult to find a new job. It's mm -hmm. difficult to find a new partner, a new <laughs> girlfriend, or. or whatever and least if everything is, is takes time takes effort and dedication yeah if you don't have these also these rewards yeah why I mean I mean it's boring at the end yeah yeah I mean so I think it's kind of like a, it's the natural evolution I think for me in my life actually um, and it's funny that you said that yeah it's, it's time to learn it's time to when you when no one is no one is seeing you You can learn and you can do like uh, improving and stuff because people don't see what happened since the first episode. Yeah, and 
I think I would like to explain something about yeah, let's, it. Yeah, let's do it. We, we can we can talk about how we began, um, and the uh, for me it's a really big step what we did. Mm-hmm. I mean, since remember the first episode, and now yeah, we we evolved yeah. really like a lot, and also I think is maybe people don't really appreciate it, but I appreciate it because yeah, yeah. I think it's for me it's really important. Mm-hmm. The first episode, it was in Borja's house, Borja's apartment. Uh, and we we had only one phone, I think, no? I think it was We your recorded phone. it with one phone. Yeah, yeah. With, your, with your phone. But it was like... And um, it was on your table with one light, with like... Um, not really sure about it, but we wanted to try. Yeah. But the audio was okay, but... You know, everything was kind of like super, super technically was a little bit deficient, but yeah. the content was super cool. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. We improvised a lot of things, mm-hmm. but also with uh, a natural script in our heads. Mm-hmm. We knew um, what to say, what to do, and everything was kind of natural. Yeah. And we recorded two episodes. Yeah. At the same, I mean, the same day, the same morning, <laughs> and we finished so tired. We finished very tired. Yeah, because uh, it was like like what like uh, three hours, more than more, three hours, more. like four hours of speaking. More because I remember I I was almost dark when I came home. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never like. And I, uh, I remember like my phone ran out of battery in the middle of the recording, true, so yeah. one of the recordings uh, got corrupted. It was it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. And sound wise was decent, but my house has a lot of natural reverb. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean like it was very fun, but that's the thing. We did it, and then after we have the first one, I said okay. Now we have this this thing to improve, and then we went for uh, the second round, and then you you got this um, contact with the uh, cluster guys, mm-hmm. yeah. and we started recording here at cluster, yeah. uh, which is a, a big step because it's a much better environment than my place. It's quiet, uh, it's controlled, uh, light doesn't change too much, yeah, and it's really. It's, but also, I wanted to. Um, talk about more about even if it's you have something in your life that doesn't work Mm -hmm. and if you focus on the things that you can that you can um, improve that's good but also use the things that you have already yeah we had the audio and we had a the video was not really decent to go to do but the content was okay we used these things that we had Instead of saying no, I'm not going to continue, we we did that. We you, we worked with the tools we had, and we did that. Yeah. And the the second the, the second edition was better. The third edition was better. And I think that's I mean I, it's a constant in my life. Yeah, and I think that this is a problem with, for example, like with perfectionism. I know a lot of people that they don't do things because they want everything to be perfect, and eventually they don't move on. And I always say, like, in my experience, it's better to do. And because by doing, you realize what you need to improve. If you never do, you can plan, but then the reality will crash you. And many times you're going to be always afraid. No, I still need that to do that. No, just just do it. And then you will see when you do it. Like, it's what happened with the episodes, right? Like, we have an idea. It didn't work at all the, the way we wanted. But thanks to that, that things that we move on, now it's working the way we want it. Yeah. Now exactly. it's it's much everything like image is better, audio is better, environment is better, content is better. But <clears throat> it was impossible to get here without making the mistakes. Yeah, totally. And I think it's kind of like I I confess that I used to be this guy of super perfectionist about doing things. And and it's true, at the end you you, you don't evolve. You the only the only the only thing that you satisfy is your ego. Mm-hmm. When you are a super perfectionist about that, and it's never ending, it's like an addiction. It's like never ending. Yeah. It is never is going to be one hundred percent perfect, and that's a waste of time, a waste of resources, a waste of like 
um, opportunities and everything. But also, I think is that doing things is okay, but also, I think is the, the key, in, in, in my perspective, the key is to try to have a limit. A limit of the say, like, let's say, less than here, I prefer not to do it. Uh -huh. Everything that is going to be more above the here mm -hmm. is, is, a, is a reward, it's something that I yeah. will do. It's like the balance in the end, like yeah. going, going to this kind of balance. Because obviously, if you just do without any kind of plan, you're just a kamikaze and yeah. you're going to crash yourself. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, but it's in the end like watching this kind of like this as a, as a spectrum between like total perfectionist or fucking fool that it doesn't plan anything. Both extremes are bad. You need to find this balance in which you like control risk. You're going to do something that you think that more or less is going to go in the way that you want, but keep a lot of flexibility. And, and this is the, you know, if you manage to find this middle point that it's, it's not that difficult because it's not an exact middle point, it's a point in, an expect, in, in a spectrum. So you can be somewhere there and then you calibrate. So it's, it's very fun. There, I, I, there is a story I like about that. I don't know if it's true or false, but the, you know, the illustration is good. So in a university, a photography teacher, a photography professor, divided the class into groups and say the one group will do in the whole semester one photography. They will be evaluated only for one photography and it needs to be like the best photography possible. Mm -hmm. The other half of the group, they're going to do thousands of photographies. And it happens that the group that was doing not the perfect, not looking for the perfect photography, were doing better photographies because they were doing photography all the time. So they were you know, they were doing it, perfectionists, like, uh, you know, like uh, perfecting the, what they were doing, checking the mistakes, taking more chances and so on. While the others were like looking for perfection and in the end they only have one shot. The, the, again, it's a little bit like a uh, poetic thingy, but mm -hmm. basically the, the, the story is that like you learn to improve by doing and keep your mind always flexible because again we come back to the idea of the podcast we, that was not the idea when we started collaborating we didn't have in mind doing a podcast but coffee after coffee we have this idea and then when we started the podcast the beginnings were not like perfect not even like the second the third the fourth episode was not as good as we won I think now we are satisfied with the quality that we are getting yeah, you can always be better, but I think we have a decent product that is going to be, if it evolves, it's going to be even better. But I'm super satisfied. Yeah. I want to say two things about yeah. what you said. Uh, the first thing is really quick about the origins of the podcast. We, at the beginning, on the first two episodes, we were saying uh, on the, the name of the podcast because it was uh, Two Shadows of Business. Two Shadows of Business. Yes, yeah, Two Shadows of Business. And, uh, but then after the third, no, it was in the third episode, I think. And we were not really satisfied with that. Yeah. I remember you insisting like, ah, I don't yeah. know, I'm sure, blah, blah. And then you found those, uh, this name, oh, yeah. Business Noir. Business like, Noir. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, let's, even we created a, uh, an email account, I think. We had to remake all the emails. And actually, it was, I think, that before we published even the episodes. So this is why we published already like the first episode under the name of Business Noir. However, in the two first episodes, we call it Two Shadows of Business. Two Shadows uh -huh. of Business. But, you know, like, but no, no one knows what you said. When at the beginning, you don't have enough repercussion to people notice it. Yeah. So you can, it's kind of... Like, and, and that's the thing. Imagine that we will have decided, like, okay, we're not going to publish the episodes because we call it different, like... Oh, you're not, you have to put some kind of note or something like that ah, it's like, like you know no. that's the thing in the end we decide like come on it's only like the name we, we name it like a couple of times per podcast this then people will understand that we just change and we, we can explain it now and it's like a funny anecdote exactly now. and the other thing I wanted to tell you is I don't think it's really romantic idea what you said about this uh, mm -hmm. or, uh, because I, I, when I was studying photography um, mm -hmm. I mean 2000 years ago probably <laughs> um uh, I always remember my teacher, one of my teachers telling me, well, telling the class actually, um, it's like, you, for having a good photo, you need to take 2,000 photos of the same thing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I didn't understand very well at that time, but then with practice the same year, I understood what he meant. Uh-huh. Uh, at that time, we were shooting with film. We, mm-hmm. we were not shooting with the digital cameras. Digital cameras were available, but very expensive. And I, I remember, well, actually, the first digital camera I took, it was from the school, because they had the money to pay it. And it was amazing, the, the change. <laughs> but we're shooting with film. We're talking about like between 24 and 36 photos, mm-hmm. every film. Yeah. And there is nothing in compare what we take right now. Yeah. 24 photos for one thing. And you had to do a portrait, for example. We were doing at least two, two films. Yeah, for each thingy, right? For each uh, for uh, portrait. A normal portrait, and it was minimum two. Yeah. And change, uh, trying to do, trying to, to do, the, the, and then trying to do the best photo, different angles, different stuff. But if you see the, we call it contacts, mm-hmm. because you put all these photos on the same page. Yeah. And you see everything is kind of the same. Yeah. But you needed to do that in, to, in order to choose the best, the best, yeah. the best, yeah. the best result. So as you said, one photo, you take one chance. Yeah. 1,000 photos. There yeah. are like a lot of possibilities plus the learning. Exactly. Yep. So it's kind of like, um, I, yeah. In my, in my personal life, I can relate as well uh, because I'm a musician as well. And during the pandemic, I remember I had this self-challenge of doing, during a time, like one song per month. Like uh, everything. Like, I, like full? Like full composed, with, the, with everything, everything, with the lyrics? Composed, yeah. lyrics, uh, recording, production... Mixing, master, wow. everything, absolutely wow. everything. And it was a lot of work. And to be honest, these songs are not the best. Like when I listen to them, because I. I what I, the style will be like? A... It's like rock. I was doing like rock, metal. And when I, when I go and, and listen to these songs, it's true, like the final quality, because I was under, under my own constraint. But that, actually, this time, I learned a lot of production because. I have to push myself to do that. So I was experimenting, but I was pushing to publish. I was not like thinking, no, I will wait until it's perfect. No, because I said, no, by the end of the month, however, needs to be done, like a job, like it needs to go. So I was learning how to automatize things, how to do things better, how to, because I was working all the time on that. I was learning all the time. And maybe these songs were not the best, but the songs that I can do now, they feed from the learnings of these songs. Yeah. And because I was pushing myself to do different things, because if I will have stayed with one song for three months, I will have not learned anything. Yeah. And I will have not the creativity, because that, the other problem with, for example, creative stuff, is pushing yourself. Yeah. It's like, you cannot say, if, if you work in a creative world, so if it's a hobby, it's not a big deal. But if you are a creative and it's your job, you cannot say, oh, I'm not inspired today. No, you have a client, you have to deliver. Mm, yes, but I think it's kind of like, yeah, it's different in terms of like, because creativity is, is a really big mm-hmm. concept, right? I mean, some people will say like creativity is also deciding what you're going to cook today. Yeah. Some people think that. And for me, creativity is more into more conscious decision plus unconscious and experience mm-hmm. at least is my maybe it's a little bit more philosophical but it's quite I understand creativity um, and I think it's kind of like a, one of the things about creation or creating something mm-hmm. is like you're learning all the time mm-hmm. you're learning but you need to be awake in terms of like willing to learn yeah. um, let's say the first episodes where we did the, edi- the editing was not the perfect, was not the best one, but we were open to improve. Uh-huh. We had the window mm-hmm. to, oh, to improve, but it was there. And I think it's quite a deep creativity. It takes you to places that you need to be open to be more creative. Yeah. And uh, then your own skills and your, the circumstances that you are and everything. And uh, for example, like I want to talk about what is the process in the, in the, during the podcast? We normally, we, uh, we do the recording on Saturday. Today is Saturday. 
and we do it in the morning because we are quite I think we are very morning persons yeah um, so we meet here we spend maybe two or three hours uh, doing these things without cuts we are only uh, maybe a couple of ten we had cuts since we are in cluster mm -hmm. And um, and now you can hear people uh, people here on cluster because it, it's also it adds a little bit more of this uh, improvisation that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and then we share the content. He uh, prepared the audios and uh, he sent me all everything on by by email or by like everything or any cloud that we have. And then the the, the magic begins, right? It's just like. The uh, intros, the audio, the video, all putting all together. It's a lot of time, it's a lot of hours of, uh, of editing. Um, and I think the results are there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's getting more and more, more interesting to see and to watch. And, but also it takes a lot of time after we have the episode launched because this gentleman here, he's in charge of... Selecting all the shorts and 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 these things that are there and just and it's a lot of time. Yeah. I don't know how many time how many days did you spend the last one. Like, yeah, uh, uh, as well because this week I've been sick and I was doing that in in you know like small periods. But it's true, like it's it's time consuming. However, like what we're saying, it becomes easier mm. because when you do things. You automatize things in your in your mind, and you you become more skilled. So, like the first thing that you do, it's always like more complicated because you don't know where are things, how to do that. You don't have a process. But already with the with the new videos that I'm selecting, I know exactly uh, how I want to organize the project. Then I have my templates to do it. So, uh, like sometimes it may be very discouraging for people to start something because the first iterations of whatever you do is going to be more difficult yeah. than the number five. But you, you cannot skip. Yeah, I'm you, sharing, you I'm sharing knowledge because yeah. um, I think that is a mistake I see sometimes. Um, people don't share things because they are, they are afraid of, uh, they, oh, they're going to steal it, they're going to steal my mm -hmm. system or something like that. But it's, it's good to share things because at the end, you I don't know, you... You learn from that. You, yeah. you you get collaborations. Is about that. Collaboration is about like you do stuff. I do stuff, and we couldn't. And you can see like right now with the age of YouTube, you can see how this is helpful because like a lot of people is actually uh, getting a lot of money by sharing their knowledge. Yeah. They they design a system and they they don't keep it for themselves. They yeah. use them, and as well they share it, and they they. Increase the reputation. They help people. It's. A, it's. I think I, I mentioned that in the previous episode. Like this friend of mine that is a, an Instagrammer, and when I was like a little bit like, yeah, I don't. I don't like to speak uh, of my project because I can jinx them, whatever. And she said, like, no, I, I always speak about my project because then it put pressure on me, and it it feels more real when yeah. I'm sharing with people my yeah. project. It's not. It comes out from my head to the world, and it becomes something real. And then I feel more like. Okay, I can do that because you speak with people, you share, like, and you are sending some knowledge, and somebody will share. Ah, so maybe you can do like this, or it's good. Exactly. Yeah, I, I advise always to share. And um, I would like to ask you about. Um, I don't know. I think it's very. Uh, we we never talk about this, but um, what about your first? Because you came here to Poland when? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. What was what's your experience here? I mean, not all the, not the yeah. whole stuff, but um, why? Because I don't know. It happened to you, but every time I meet Polish people, which is every day basically, <laughs> they told me why you're here. Yeah, yeah, same. Like, oh, you come from Spain. Why, why are you here? He, why are you here? Everybody in Poland wants to go to Spain. And okay, there are like many many dimensions on that. And first of all. Uh, job dimension. I think that Poland has more job opportunities than Spain right now. And you know, I'm I'm flexible. I'm looking for opportunities, and Poland is it's a good place. Krakow is a very beautiful city and has a lot of things to do. And something that a lot of Polish people don't realize it's like how safe is Poland, or at least Krakow. It's one of the safest cities I've been in, and. Unfortunately, I cannot say that of Spain, 
like I feel more safe in Poland than in Spain. I'm com I'm I'm, com I'm from Barcelona, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know a little bit about. I that. know I know a little bit about. So, that. and this is what I said. Like I I love Spain, and I think that that it has a lot of good things, but it, everything is not black and white. And people normally has an idealized uh, vision of Spain because Polish people when they go to Spain, they go to the beach two weeks in summer. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's. Perfect, because you go yeah. to the beach, it's hot, you have nothing to do, you are drinking sangria and eating tapas, top. Yeah. But... Go to the metro yeah, in then summer. Yeah. Working, living in Spain, it's a different story. The job opportunities, at least eight years ago, there were none. Uh, then, times of safety, I, I don't think that... <clears throat> sorry, Spain is not like very unsafe. But Krakow is a lot safer. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I remember the f one of the first things I liked, and I would say the main decision that I decided to stay. Why, why, why I decided to stay, is because I felt, um, yeah, safe, but safe in a, in a, in terms of like I can find uh, peace. Here. Mm -hmm. I can find peace, yeah, and it's something that I really like. I wanted to, I wanted to find, I wanted mm. to find. In the, it was this moment in my life, and I needed to find peace. Yeah. But peace, I'm talking about also safety. Let's say, I never felt threatened. I had that only a couple of times that I felt, but it's a city. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, bad things happens all the time, but um, but I felt like comfortable. That yeah, I could go anywhere and. People were like, yeah, P Poland, I mean, Poland is a place that people are at the beginning cold. No, I wouldn't say cold, more like serious. Uh -huh. um, but then you can break this, you, 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 you can break this, this, uh, this, or you, you have to get used to it. Yeah. They're not that as close as, as we will be in Spain, but... But I appreciate it. Yeah, um, I like it. I, I feel at the same, like very comfortable here. I, I came here without any specific idea of how long I'm going to be. I just came and said like, whatever. And then, you know, like, I think that this year I started realizing that it's it's eight years. Like, you know, it's time is passing and suddenly you look back, it's like yeah. eight years, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. But I think that at some point during these years, I fell in love with the city. It's a city that I like. There is a lot of opportunities, and not only in job, but as well like to like cultural events, places to go. It has this kind of balance between modern and old, and there are a lot of like very cool communities. Yeah. So, I yeah, think. I mean, like <clears throat> weather could be better. Yeah, weather is kind of like, but to be honest, I think is I don't know. Um, I I miss the sun in winter. But mm, summers here are amazing. Summers here are very beautiful. Are beautiful. Also, what I miss is uh, some food. Not all of them, yeah. but for example, like, I don't know, seafood. Um, yeah. Tapitas. Uh, yeah, but this, like it's more like, not. I would always say, like, not specific food, but the, la the style. The, yeah. You know, going out, because I, I don't, in, in Cartagena, where, where I'm from, uh, it was very common for us, like for my group of friends, that we don't go to a restaurant to have dinner. We go to different places, eh, like one tapa here, one tapa there, one tapa there. In the end, you're visiting like three, four places, you're all the time in the street. And I miss this lifestyle a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Here, it's another life. If, if, if you go to a restaurant, you go to a restaurant, you sit down there, and that's it. Yeah. Um, it's not bad, it's different, but I miss that as well. Uh, there is one area in Barcelona I like a lot, and it's kind of like... It was very similar from uh, what you said. Is um, it's really close on the sea and it's really old. It's the old town basically, okay. and you have these ancient places that you have even probably um, the door. I don't know. Has been there for 20, 200 years. You know, oh, like yeah. you know, this kind of. This it's soaked in oil, in wine, of in beer. Everything is this, this is the good like stuff. The good stuff and the best tapas ever. Yeah. And it's full, loud, blah blah. But it's the best food, the best company, the best, the best ambience, yeah. and there, and yeah, I miss that. I miss these kind of things. So just, I don't miss people being loud. 
because I'm particularly not loud. Yeah, same. I think that the, we, we, when we're in the in the uh, abroad, we got used to the softer, uh, like lower volume. And then when I go back to Cartagena, and I go breakfast with my parents, for example, to a cafe, it's like what the hell? It's what like the every, fuck? everybody's screaming. The coffee machine is so loud. I cannot listen. Nobody around me, and everybody's like just yelling. Yeah. But now I take it like as something like okay, it feels like home. It's true. Like sometimes it's like difficult to focus because I'm used to to be in the coffee place here where everybody is speaking like this yeah, and so yeah. on. And I like it. And then you go there, and I understand like people like they, they get crazy sometimes when they go to Spain. Like why everybody is screaming to each other? Like no, no, it's uh, they're speaking. It's normal. It's not my. Like, why everybody is so angry about this? No, no, they're happy. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> living, living there. You, you you have to get used to. It. You have exactly. To get used to it. I don't know. In my case, I I, I guess if your case is the same. I felt very welcomed. Yeah, totally. By people, um, people are really interested by by the story that why you're in Poland, why yeah. you're in Poland. And I think it's a really nice icebreaker. Yeah. For, totally. I mean, for like, uh, for, yeah, to meeting people, actually. Yeah. I, th I think that, that Polish people sometimes, they, they don't appreciate their own stuff. They're like, oh, why you're here? But and the same happens in Spain. Yeah. I think that the best thing to appreciate your own stuff is to go abroad. Yeah. Because I think that I, I appreciate it much more Spain after living eight years totally. here, because you see all the things that you're missing and it gives you this perspective, like not everything is bad because when you're in, a, for example, it's very common when you're in Spain, as you said, like, uh, oh, Spain is shit. There is like this kind of like two groups from people that it's like, Spain is the best in the universe. Every, every other place is shit. And then these people that, oh, Spain is the worst. We're the worst. No, Spain has good things, bad yeah. things. I mean, it's kind of one of the things that makes me remember that is, uh, I think it was a kind of like a meme or something I saw like you had the map of Europe and uh, inside the, inside every, every country but like what's a topic that you hate that people will trigger more uh -huh. on the country and in Poland what is Poland also actually they were complaining about uh, they uh -huh. like to complain about Poland, Poland but at the same time they love Poland yeah. they feel very attached to Poland and I think it's true yeah. and I think it's kind of like um, and I don't know, I think it's, I'm still trying to figure it out why in Catalonia they call it Polacos. <laughs> I don't really know what, what's, what's it. I, so, somebody explained to me, but I forgot. But yeah. it makes sense actually a little bit because I don't know, I mean, I think Catalans, we are a little bit closed at the beginning. And then once you break this yeah. wall, you become more like close and more mm -hmm. friend. Also, the language is quite. Um, we share a lot of uh, sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in Polish, by the way, how to Polish? How is your Polish? <laughs> <laughs> Next topic. Yeah. Next topic. Uh, okay. but, you, I, I but, but you talk. You I talk understand Polish. Stuff. I can. I can speak uh, restaurant Polish. I can order food in in Polish. Ah, okay. Okay. So, but it's kind of okay. Yeah, because Polish is kind of. I don't know. I think it's. Uh, they they feel really really nice when you talk in Polish. Yeah, they, they appreciate it. They appreciate it a lot because uh, it's a very difficult language, that's for sure. But it is, it is. Um, but I think it's kind of like um, you, I, in my in my mind. I mean, in my opinion, I think I would like to improve more and more Polish because I think it's kind of like it's um, kind of a, a way to respect, but also to learn different is different skills. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's always good. New skills is is, is always good. And I try to, you know, whatever, like, when, whenever I go to post office, supermarket, or restaurants, I, I try to do it in Polish, like this kind of, like, everyday thing. I, I am not able to do, like, a proper conversation in Polish. But every time, um, I understand more and so on. Yeah. I think <coughs> it's kind of like um, um, one of the things I like. I mean, for example, I've been living only in Krakow, uh, but I was visiting different places. Um, one of the other cities I like a lot is Warsaw. Yeah, I think it's a, an amazing city. But is uh, in terms of the things that are happening, not because of this beautiful, because it's not especially beautiful. I think it's, m m Krakow is more beautiful than than Warsaw in terms of architecture, because obviously was 
mm -hmm. was rebuilt after the Second World War, so it's more modern. And it reminds me a little bit of Madrid. Mm -hmm. Had you been into Madrid? Uh, uh, I was in Madrid like 10 years ago. 10 years ago. <laughs> <Last time. laughs> yeah, I think, I, I think me too, but time flies, yeah. yeah. But I think it's, uh, I'm, I've been there in Warsaw like at least 15 times or something like that. Like, 15 times? Yeah. I've yeah. been only twice. No, I mean, I love it. I mean, I know it quite, quite well. Um, and I, but I don't see myself living there. Mm -hmm. let's say unless it will be like for work or something like that yeah. but it's something that is if you want to do something there is a place there yeah. it reminds me a little bit of a, a mix between a European city and American city nice. so yeah but it's my, uh, let, let's see what happens I, I need to visit Warsaw more often yeah um, <coughs> uh, I don't know I would like to take a break yeah I if think you it's, think it's yeah. the moment for a little break for a little break more coffee and we will continue with our uh, our special episode because we want to show you a little bit more about not only about business cases but also about us what yeah. we think who we are and but without also being boring because what we we, we don't want to be boring we want to be <laughs> fun and also is one of the uh, slogans of the podcast is like making business more fun because it can be fun making business fun again exactly <laughs> so um, do you want to add something else that's it like let's see uh, in the next blog and let's take a little break for water and coffee okay see you like hello Nico here from the podcast business noir and then I would like to show you a little bit more about the uh, reviews because we think it is very important having reviews and feedback from the real protagonists, which are the people who are doing the podcast with us. And we were analyzing all the cases and everything. So we thought it would be interesting to see their own reviews. So we asked them if they could film a video about uh, their opinions and, and what they think about our work and um, the feelings and if they, it was useful the information so uh, we compile a couple of videos about them and um, here they are <laughs> hi business noir it's anna and i want to express my sincere gratitude to uh, become your first guest for your first episode uh, you know i was riding a bicycle once i was listening to this uh, uh, podcast first podcast and I was so happy and overwhelmed with my happiness. So I just stopped and I was walking and I was smiling all the time. I was walking uh, <laughs> to, to the supermarket because I just couldn't stop uh, being happy about uh, how you did your job, how you highlighted the business concepts I have, how you motivated me to uh, perform these baby steps to um, grow my business from uh, nothing to something, something good. And I want also notice that the atmosphere of your podcast, this, this noir atmosphere, is amazing, guys. You have to do it. Please inspire more people. And uh, thank you very much again. <laughs> You're always welcome to be my guests as well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Nico and Borja. I would like to say a big, big, huge thank you for your podcast. Uh, that's taking my case and giving me so useful knowledge, advices, your professional point of view. I took notes. I will think and rethink about everything again and again. Thank you very much because the most important thing that I took from your podcast that I'm the person who is zero at business and I really don't know the first steps how to start. And it was very useful for me that you give me instruments, information, your point of view. It helps me a lot to understand the whole picture, the future and what is going on right now. What I can do at the beginning, small steps and what I can do in future when I decide to grow. So thank you a lot. Wishing you and your podcast all the best. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back again. We have a little bit more coffee. Refill. Refill yeah. of coffee. Refill coffee. And um, I would like to talk about the future. The future. future of the podcast. I mean, the future of uh, what we're doing and everything. Because I think is um, it would be nice to share 
our yeah. thoughts. Uh, this season, the first season of the podcast is going to finish at the December, uh, uh -huh. at the end of the year. And because we want to take also the time, Christmas, obviously everyone is going to be uh, busy. You probably you will go to Spain. Probably, yeah, yeah, most likely. So I think it's good. it will be a really good moment to to do some feedback, to understand, yeah. to get some data. Reflect on what we have done. Yeah. Exactly. And let's see if we can find also... Because, I mean, the idea that we have is like we will continue doing the podcast mm -hmm. because I think we think it's very fun. Yeah. We, have a, we have a really nice understanding about what we're talking about. Yeah. We got... I don't know. We don't spend a lot of time now doing doing and editing the podcast because we got the system. So, but also we we would like to know what's the what's the audience opinion about that. Yeah. Because yeah, we can do it because if, but if we don't have audience, we will not, we will need to think about what we yep. what, what we're going to do. Yep. Mm, but I think it's kind of like. Um, For, in my opinion, will be like a moment to find a kind of a, a breaking point. Will be like a breaking point to find something better, mm -hmm. and it will be like the opportunity to uh, get a even better, better quality, but also better content and better better things to do. So maybe changes or something like that. I don't know what you think. No, no, same. Like, uh, let's see that as a cycle. We close the first season. Then we reflect on what we have done, the improvements, and what is the new approach for the new season, because we can maybe think about new ideas or new directions, see what works, what doesn't work. And as you said as well, like check with people. Like We have like some, like the, the videos are being watched. Uh, little by little is growing. Obviously, we, we are trying to reach more people, and this is only doable by keep working. But yeah, like the idea is like to finish the this season, understand what have we learned, uh, what is the new direction, uh, and this started a little bit like chaotic, not, not chaotic, but we didn't have an idea of how many episodes we want to do, how mm -hmm. we want to organize. It was like, as we said, let's do it, and by doing, we learn. For the next season, we can think, okay, what do we want to do? How many episodes we want to do? Uh, where do we want to record them? What is the you know industries we are looking for? Uh, collect people that want to be helped and so on. So that's that's the idea. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, I mean, it was as you said, it's more like a, improvising things doesn't mean that you don't have a plan. Yeah. Also, because we had a plan, we 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 always talk about it yeah. every, every every time we were doing something or we're doing a, a new case, we were thinking, okay. Uh, we want to do this, but we, we we check how many industries we are touching, how, what will we will we will, need, we will be needing for for the next one, and I think it's also improvising. It doesn't mean having losing, losing control of what yeah, you're yeah. having. We didn't know how many episodes, but we clearly saw as the end of the year as a something that it could be like a really proper finish for the first season. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, mm, we were having a plan. Yeah. There, there is a, a sentence I like about that. Like it's, uh, it says like, not everybody that wonders is lost. Yeah. So basically it means like... It's true. Uh, sometimes you are moving, uh, more or less you know what is the direction, even though you don't have like the, the clear path but you're not lost, you're going somewhere. Uh, you're moving into a range of places and sometimes you will have it like more clear the path that you need to follow and sometimes it will be like something that you will be learning by doing the way, but uh, it doesn't mean that you're lost. And I think that this is what happens with us. We knew what is our idea. We didn't have every step as clear as we have it right now But to get there, we have to do that. And then in the second season, we will have the path much clearer. We think that we have more clearer, and then maybe it will change again. We're open to that, so yeah. Yeah, but I, I don't think it will change drastically because, yeah, yeah. first of all, what one of the things we like most, and um, we talked many times about it, is because we are helping people. Yeah. And 
we can make a difference. On, and I'm really happy to help um, in any any way possible to mm-hmm. to people who wants to to build something or uh, because we are like I don't know we are. It's not about only about selling yourself or like selling your products and everything because it's more about like how we can contribute to make a, to be, to make better yeah. better content and reach people because I'm I'm happy when I see uh, reviews and people saying like oh you helped me a lot and it's kind of like yeah maybe it's a little bit feeling your ego maybe yeah, but, but it's, yeah. it's everyone has an ego but it's also I think it's really quite interesting for me to to achieve is 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 an achievement that we we like uh, I like it and uh, the other thing is like uh, in terms of like the being a, 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 a someone who is beginning something let's say an entrepreneur or like a creative person who wants to begin something i think is the mindset the mindset is very important for mm-hmm. uh, to let's as you said since the beginning do something do some do things do things without thinking too much about about yeah. it and that's why I don't know. I feel happy about thinking about it. Yeah. No, just like. But um, about the business noir, um, one of the things, one of the, uh, I think it's the the films, the noir films, all these. Uh, are you a, a consumer of these uh, films? Actually, not. No. Not much. <laughs> but uh, I, I like the aesthetics. Yeah. I like the the vibe, but. I don't know if I have uh, seen many film noirs because, like, to be honest, I, I never thought about like maybe if I think about that, I have seen some. I need to, I need to think, but not. It's not my, let's say, my favorite style. Yeah, me neither. But I like the cases. I love, I love the cases, yeah. the the detective stuff, yeah. and that's what I love about that. Yeah, me too. Like the all the detective, like thinking. Cracking the case, the mystery. I like. Yeah, this, it's kind of like a, everything that that revolves around that idea. Yeah. And we didn't. Well, I mean, we didn't want to do these, uh, like, say, mimicking the aesthetics because the videos are in color. I did not in black. Yeah. You know, like, but it's more about the philosophy behind it. Yeah, I'd say I like give it the mood. Let's yeah, say it's the mood of the of the videos rather yeah. than yeah. And. Um, one of the, one of the anecdote I want to tell I want to tell is like uh, it was the first uh, podcast. Well, for you it was the second podcast, but not really a second podcast because it was like how many episodes do you do you from the previous one? I think that we recorded three or four episodes. So it's, so it's like very it's, uh, yeah, it's more or less like the same. Oh. And I think these um, what we were talking uh, in the first cafes. I remember the first coffees that we were having. Um, I was telling you about like, yeah, programming the YouTube channel, you know, the YouTube episodes and everything, programming everything, and yeah. just to put it uh, you know, on time. And uh, doing a podcast is basically more or less the same. Mm-hmm. Is you have some content that you need to deliver to people. Is like having a work, job to do mm-hmm. in in a corporation or something like that. And you need to organize yourself to deliver it. Yeah. When you're gonna do it is your problem, and is your own decision. Yeah. Some people do it every day. Some people do it. I'm gonna spend five hours the last day or the first day, and I will. So at the end is something that, if you have the mindset, I think you can you can do whatever you want. Yeah, consistency is very important. Uh, you need to be honest with yourself. Uh, this is something very important when you're doing any kind of project, business, or whatever. The consistency of understanding how can you manage the work that you have, like being realistic with your own time. Because, for example, this is what happened with us. Like, uh, the, the first idea of this podcast was to do it weekly, and it's something that I would love it, but it's true that right now with our resources and our time, doing something weekly will take... Uh, too much effort yeah, and we will deliver something bad or not as good as we would like to. Or we will get tired very soon. Or we will get burned out very easily. So we manage this expectation to do it like every two weeks. I think that is perfect. Obviously, 
imagine that this podcast, like second season, explodes and it reaches a lot of people. I would love to do it on a weekly basis, but for that we will need more help. Yeah, and and so on. Yeah, and at the moment it's it's okay. But like I'm I'm you. You, you you know my style. I mean, I like to 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 try to ask people and yeah. to to evolve these things, and um, I think it's possible. I would like to ask people to contribute and to yeah. collaborate with us. We will be successful with this. I don't know, but at least we will try, yeah. and something good will happen for sure. Exactly. Like, if your target is not. Yeah, that's the thing. This is something I learned as well, like about setting your own expectations, not to not to aim for things that you cannot control, but to aim for things that you can control. And then let's see how the outcome goes. Meaning, like we cannot control if this is gonna be is gonna reach like thousand of people. This out of a little bit out of our control. But yeah. what we can control is to try to improve every episode. Yeah. Try to get better. Uh, um, Better try to content, get better in, yeah. in front of the camera, yeah. try to add more value, try to improve the image, improve the audio, uh, improve the promotion, all of this. And if we do that, whatever happens, I will be satisfied because this is my target. My target is do your best. Exactly. And if it doesn't work today, you, you should not see it like as a failure. You can see it as a skills that you have learned for your next project. And maybe the next project is the one that will explode yeah. you, you never know but this is this is how I, I keep my motivation up because to be honest like at this moment of time I don't care if we are being seen by 100 people or by 1000 obviously I prefer 1000 or like hundreds of thousands but if not still my idea is like I want to finish the season I want to see that there has been an improvement I want to get these skill sets and this is a lot of new skills that will be useful in my life, in my, you know, the portfolio of my skills. Yeah. And, but at the end, I mean, followers and listeners and stuff is not really like, um, yeah, the amount is important, but I really like um, volatile. Yeah. Because at the moment that you you don't deliver some stuff. You can grow very quick, but also you can grow, like you, you can, can go down yeah. really, really quick also. And I think it's kind of like uh, I, when I was, when I began my first um, project, let's say big project, I got almost 100,000 followers on, on Facebook. And it was thanks to the name, to the branding I was doing, I was doing everything just, and, but they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> And but 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 that was the purpose. It was the the purpose. It was like something like, like I did because doing the same thing. I want to try the things. Yeah. And it happened. But that's it. These people probably they don't even remember what they were following this group. But it was okay. It was it was yeah. a, it was a, 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 the purpose of that. And I don't. I, I think it's kind of like what I learned and my failures because I had a lot of mistakes and failures and everything, and but that's part of the process of, of yeah. growing. Uh, I will say like um, I never took the failure as something that it will change. Um, I, I, I don't give up easily. Mm -hmm. I, I want to say that I don't give up easily, and if these mistakes are uh, kind of like an obstacle in, in what you do, okay, just work to become better, yeah, and to try to avoid that or try. Um, sometimes you have to say no to something. Of course, yeah. No, just I mean, I mean, my my biggest mistake is basically sometimes is not trying more harder. Yeah. Um, that's what I, I I wouldn't say regret because regrets are like something yeah. like I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, well, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's the right word to say. Yeah, believe I, in I, that. I I know what you mean because I I have the, a very similar. I don't thought. want to think too much about this word. Exactly. Let's say let's say this. I have two takes on that. Uh, first is uh, about what you just said, like about giving up. Like I I came to realize that I actually never give up. I just park projects. 
Yeah. Because maybe it's not the moment. Like a lot of people told me, like you have too many projects at the same time, and I was, it's and they say like, yeah, it's it's impossible. You cannot do all the th all the things at the same time. It's like no, it's not that I'm doing all the things at the same time. I have many many projects that actually they are like. Uh, and marked in, in different categories like business, music, life, whatever. And I never give up. If something is not going, I just park it. And for example, the, the YouTube channel. It's yeah. not that I fail. Like I don't feel like I fail with my YouTube channel. I did 10 videos. I learned some stuff. And I park the project temporarily. Exactly. Maybe in two years, I decide to take it back with all the knowledge I'm going to get yeah. during th these two years. But... It's not like people can say, oh, you start something and you fail. No, I, I didn't fail. I did exactly what I needed to do. In this because moment. the expectations also were not to succeed, like, uh, no. you know, like having millions of views or whatever. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, my, my, I, don't, I don't measure my, this is the second take, I don't measure my uh, success on the followers. Because this is, this is, as you said, like one day you're up, the second day you're down. Mm -hmm. And if you're following that, uh, you're gonna be very unhappy. But if you're, you mess, you uh, you measure your success on the step that you take, it's something that you have under control, yeah. regardless of what is happening at the end of the of the of the thing. So you know, you do things, uh, and you are happy with what you're doing. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, totally. It's okay. And when it works, you say like it's a temporary thing. But you don't get high because of the likes. Yeah. Totally. And if it's not working, you don't get like down because of the likes. Because then your life is gonna be like a you know like the, like a mount this kind of like a roller coaster. Yeah, and uh, society is getting a real bop. Well, this is a different topic for another time. But yeah, I agree with you. Just um, is one of the things that you said about the um, two things that you said about uh, you the project about the YouTube channel that you were having, that is kind of like you try to do it, but it's parked, you will continue maybe in the future, you don't know. Yeah, so I have something similar with also with the, I did it in 2022, mm -hmm. um, with a, a documentary about Ukraine when the war uh, began, because it was like, it was very touching for me. I mean, I, I was very touched because it was for the proximity, for the, yeah. for, you know, like for the cultural, um, uh, closeness that they have between Poland and Ukraine, and I began this, doing these things, and it's not. A, I was paying all by, by my by, uh, from from my pocket and everything. Just it was okay, and it's something that I don't consider as a failure. It's more about like a testing what I can do, and it, I always wanted to do a documentary mm -hmm. in photos and videos and everything, and I never did one, and I thought that is the perfect opportunity to do that. And yeah, it, I mean, it worked, and I'm really happy with, with the results. And yeah. I learned a lot of things, and I, it was also, it was the, my ego also was really yeah. um, fulfilled because I was okay. I managed to do it without being experienced in documentaries because documentaries is a big is a big thing. Yeah, I, obviously, I had contact before with documentaries and and with people who were doing documentaries. It's not, it was nothing completely new. But yes, in the process of doing it alone, yeah, and it was completely, completely a lot of time, blah blah blah, these kind of things. And also, I, I want to say about uh, one thing that you said about people are telling you like you are doing a lot of things at the same time. And I was talking with Daniel, with a friend of mine who is doing this. Uh, he's an artist mm -hmm. from Poland, um, and we have really nice conversations about about art, about projects, about like, and he's. He was telling me, yeah, I'm afraid because, uh, not afraid, he was like more concerned because I'm doing a lot of different projects, you know, like, uh, and he was, uh, he was asking me a little bit, not asking me, but more like, he was not sure about he was doing right or not. And I told him, yeah, I mean, that now is the time that you can do that because in the future, maybe you're not going to be able to do this, those many projects. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to think about it. You, you have to think about if it's going to be, if you're going to have enough time to deliver yeah. the content that you want to deliver. Yeah. Because you also have to measure when is too much. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. You are responsible of that. Yeah. You are responsible of the things that you do 
I mean, the many, many projects that you uh, have, but also you're agree. responsible of delivering the best content and the best thing that you can do. If you are pretending to be the best of the best in everyone, that is going to be impossible to do. Yeah. No, totally agree. This, this is one problem that I see a lot in in, in the work, not in the, only in the personal project here, but in the, in the working world, is uh, time management. Mm -hmm. There is a big problem. People don't know how to manage time because they don't know how to prioritize. And, and I think that this is a very important topic that you can do many things at the same time, but you need to understand as well how you prioritize the things that you are doing. And again, as you say, like what, what you want to get out of each thing that you are doing, because it's, it's very different. For example, I remember coming back to the, to the YouTube channel when I was doing that, a lot of people were saying to me like, no, maybe you need to invest more on that. You need to do more like this. I said, like, no, because I know that my target is not to become famous with that. I, I knew my target is, I wanted to start a YouTube channel and I want to do like 10 videos to know I can do them yeah. and I can improve. And I learn uh, basic video editing skills. I learn, uh, you know, how to record myself. I learned how to speak in front of a camera and so on. And that was my target. And that was okay for me. I didn't need to put more effort because people were understanding that I want to become a YouTuber. It's like, no, I don't want to become a YouTuber. Yeah. I want to learn yeah. this stuff. If it happens that I become a YouTuber, amazing. Yeah. No problemo. But then... But the goal itself is not this one. Exactly. Yeah. I have in my life at the same time other things happening and it's like, no, I need to allocate this time for that. And yeah. as you said, like, if my goal was I want to live out of these videos, then yes, then... I need to invest more, more time, and then I, I should put this as a priority number one in my life. But in that moment of time, it was not my priority number one. But the conditions that your life needs to be to make a decision like this, it needs to be very specific. You need to have time, resources, and a very specific mindset and very specific goals and a reason why you want to do this. Mm -hmm. Because at the end, it's something that is something as uh, is very difficult to be out there and showing your face and your voice and show your image i mean it is a very people don't understand that but it's a very very vicious vicious uh, consequence that you can have yeah. from e e everything because putting yourself out there yeah. It's really, really complicated. It's it's exposing yourself, and this yeah. is like uh, this is. I, I remember like the first times I was doing like public things. It's really scary. I'm, I'm like I'm used to it because I'm a musician. I've been on stage several times, uh, and I'm used to that stuff. But in, even though with that, like putting a video with your face speaking to the camera alone about something and put it on the internet, the first time yeah. is like. It's, yeah. it's scary because you, you know, start seeing. Oh, I look! Do I look like this? Do yeah. I sound like this? I mean, your all your complexes and, and fears comes to your mind, but yeah. and you need to. It's difficult, but you need to go out from this perspective and just to see it in a different way, even in a, like. And and as well, like you need to have a, a strong mindset because when you are doing something public or ex exposing yourself, you are open to. Criticism and it's normal. It's gonna yeah. come, especially on the internet, because the internet is is dark and full of horrors. But it's also really uh, bright. It's like yeah, Star Wars. It, it yeah. The, exactly. So I remember one of the videos I did uh, became popular in over the night in India and United States. So in in overnight it was like more than one thousand views. In one night. In one night. And the you the you discover why. No, it, it was all like a recommendation from YouTube. I don't know what happened with this video. Okay. Uh, but obviously, there was like a number of comments, and some were nice, and some were not nice. Some were saying like, oh, you look they, like shit, you talk yeah, shit. Yeah, you, you're, what you're saying makes no sense, or the camera is shit, or uh, the music is too loud, you cannot listen to shit, stuff like that. Okay? And it's not nice, but you need to be prepared for that and take it all like, you know, at least like see the whatever comment and see, analyze it. It has some merit because one of the comments, okay, there were like two comments about the music being too loud. One was a polite comment saying, 
Yeah, maybe the music like should be a recommendation a little, or yeah. like a feedback. Or like, yeah. And the other was rude. Like the other was like, yeah, this is shit because you cannot listen anything. The music makes the video impossible to listen. However, both things, you have to see the merit on that and say like, not personal, it's okay, but there's a learning here. I can learn out of this. But anyways, it hurts. And it's, it's a small thing. I cannot imagine like these people that has like 100,000 views and um, they have all kind of like uh, vicious comments towards themselves and some of them are, are very dark and personal and it's like... So it's it's part of the journey as well. It's part of the journey and also the the learning in the web. Also the the our let's say our experience with the it, at the moment that you put yourself in front of uh, like we're doing now, for example, podcast with audio and video. Um, my concern is not about like what what things bad are going to happen because it's not the purpose. Because if no. it will be like this, I, I'm. I'm I will be I will be like stupid to do it. Yeah. I'm not going to think about that. I yeah. I try to think about what can we do to make better better content. Yeah. Better better approach to people, how we can help people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, look better, look good when we have a really yeah. nice location. We are trying to do the best as possible, but we only thinking about the positive things because The thing is, it's free to it's free to say uh, bad things on the internet. Oh, right? yeah. uh, so you have it there. So it's it's not really like concern for me to 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 do that because mm, they will think whatever they want. Yeah. Even if you don't do that. So for, for me, the podcast, like the target of the podcast, is first getting new skills. There's yeah. always whatever I do. The first target is getting new skills. Learn learn something new. Yeah. Uh, helping people, network, and showcase what we do. Like, in the end, you know, like showing to the world my skills. Yeah. As you can see, nothing of that depends on how many followers or listeners we have. For me, yeah. this is a secondary thing that, obviously, we're going to work to make this number bigger. Yeah. But still, the, the target of it is all things that I can control, I can be satisfied already like with what we are doing. Totally, mm -hmm. totally. I think it's a, one of the, one of the, um, one of the, I mean, I, I will say like my, in my perspective, the goals for this, for the next season will be like, I would like to engage more and more the audience. Yeah. I would like to, uh, to encourage people to participate more. Yeah. And to have these, uh, more feedback but also more um, participation for yeah from, that, that's from a people. that's a good also target. collaborations and, and uh -huh. um, collaborations with other people maybe having more interviews or something like this I don't know I would like to do some I would like to find some a very uh, not in quality but in in content in the, the yeah the, like fo focus on the value on the value added value exactly added yeah. value exactly and um, yeah we, was, we have a lot of um, a lot of time to think and yeah. we have a lot of things to do um, so yeah I mean I don't know and do you want to talk about something else because we, we can we can talk about it yeah I think I was thinking like like maybe it's enough for the audience <laughs> yeah I think it's gonna be enough <laughs> to, about uh, us <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't want to. I think it's very interesting, and since it's topics that we like, we can be speaking about that for hours and hours and hours. But let's let's keep something for other future episodes. So. Yeah, we will be preparing more uh, content, more episodes like this yep. in the future, uh, because I think we'll be in a very good dynamic to to change from time to time. Yeah. And um, well, if you came to, if you arrived to this place, to this moment in the podcast, so thank you very much. And um, we will be doing more stuff. Yeah. Very soon. Like, like, uh, yeah. Again, like thank you very much. If you have been listening to one of more of our episodes, you have been uh, sharing this journey with us. Thank you. Uh, please. Feel free to contact us with any recommendation, suggestion, idea uh, in any of the channels that we have uh, our at our disposal. And just we hope to keep getting better 
to yeah. give more value and to keep growing this community. So thank you very much for being there. And thank you very much again to Cluster because they are like, uh, they are getting a really nice partnership we have. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Borja, for everything. And thank you, Nico. We will continue. We will continue doing the same. We will continue talking about talking, Talk, about, talking, talking about, about, about. We, we love talking. We yeah. love talking. We uh, we say it every every time, but it's true. So um, as you can see, uh, thank you very much, and see you on the next episode. Bye.